a lot of times we can really struggle with of what are we going to do with the rest of our life? Or whenever we step back and think, man, why, why am I here? Like, I understand that we're humans and we do things and all stuff, but, but why is Josh McDaniel here? Why do I matter? Like, really, why, why is there a purpose for my life? Is my purpose to go to school, to get good grades, to come back home, to do the sports or whatever I do, then to go off to college, get an education, find a wife or husband, settle down, get a paying job, pay the bills, have children, see those children grow up, see them repeat the same things that you did, try to do a little bit better of a job, and then eventually die and leave your family? Like, what? Why? why on earth would God, a, such a good and gracious God, create people like that? See, God does not need us. God did not create us for a need. He didn't even, he didn't even think about it. He wants us. He, he, he loves us for one purpose. And he, he created us. He sent his son on a cross to die for us for one purpose. He created the entire earth. He created man and woman in the garden, knowing full well that they would disobey, knowing full well that they would break his heart time and time and time and time again for one purpose. What is that one purpose? Why on earth would such a good God do that? I think it's beautiful. In, 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 um, in and 1 Corinthians 5, oh, excuse me, 2 Corinthians 5, it, it states it beautiful. Um, in starting verse, uh, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 6, it says, So we are always confident, even though we, we know that as long as we live in these bodies, we are not home with the Lord. For we live by believing and not by seeing. Yes, we are fully confident, and yes, we would rather always be from these earthly bodies, for then we will be home with the Lord. So whatever, wherever we are, in these bodies, or away from these bodies, our goal is to please God. For we must all stand before Christ to be judged. We each receive whatever we deserve for the good or evil we have done on this earth in our earthly bodies. We are here, our goal for here and for whenever we get to heaven or wherever, wherever we end up, our goal is to please God. See, God did not need us. God, God does not need a human to come down and glorify him. See, we're made to love him and glorify him in every single thing that you do. So it's not, it doesn't matter if you're a high schooler or a mom. It doesn't matter if you're a grown, grown man that has a job and kids and doesn't, couldn't care less. I'm fine with my life, I'm good. We're here to glorify God. We're not here for ourselves. A lot of times you can hear the like, well, whatever you want to do, whatever makes you happy, is what you're supposed to do. Whatever, whatever, whatever leads to your happiness, whatever, whatever leaves you there, then that, that's what you should do for the rest of your life. If you chase happiness, or you chase this earthly goal that you think will be it, like this, this will satisfy me. Once I get this promotion, once I get this job, once I get this salary, once I get this girl, this, this will be it. This will make my happiness. Once you chase it, you'll never find it. But whenever you chase the glory of God and chase after chasing after him and loving him and serving him and glorifying him in every single thing and every single possible conversation and action that you do glorifying him, then joy, immense joy, not happiness, joy, lasting, overflowing joy will follow you for the rest of your life. So you could be thinking, well, Josh, that has nothing to do with what I like. 
like I like photography or I like to speak or I like to write or I like music or engineering well I tell you God gave you those passions ask God to use those passions to glorify him I have an amazing friend that's a photographer and she says it best she's like I am just loving people with a camera in my hand so what are you doing what do you what do you want to do what do you love do you love doing math do you love reading then do it love people through reading love people through love people through being an engineer love people through being a nurse or a doctor do whatever you do to glorify God. It says in 1 Corinthians 10 31, it says, whether eating or drinking or do whatever, do it for the glory of God. Whenever you sit down, do it for the glory of God. Whenever you go on a coffee date, do it for the glory of God. Whenever you walk to class, do it for the glory of God. Because he has made you for such a time as this. He has made you for this specific time and he knows exactly what you're going to do. He knows exactly what you've already done and what you're going to do in the future. He's hidden you both in behind and before. He loves you so much and he has set a purpose and a plan in your heart. And it is to glorify him. It is to find joy in God. Because he loves you unconditionally. He wants you in a... Uh, and in Colossians 3.23, it says, work as if working for the Lord. So don't slop off in your job. Love the people around you. God has placed you in the specific place that you are at. This is what you're called to. This is why you're here. This is what you're supposed to do for the rest of your life. If you're in a job, if you're in a school, that's where you're supposed to be. You know why that's where you're supposed to be? Because that's where you are. God's not going to make a mistake. He's like, Ah, oh, she's not supposed to be here right now. No, you are exactly supposed to be where you are right now. So man, glorify God in that circle. Glorify God of where you are. Love the people around you. Love your classmates. Love your teachers. Love your boss. As much as as hard as it is hard to love him. And Josh, you don't understand of how hard it is to love him. No, I've had some tough bosses. I've had some tough classes. Love them. Love them. As Christ loves us. See, the two greatest commandments, as, as Jesus is walking on this earth, these, uh, these Pharisees come up to him, these educated men come up to him, and they say, okay, let's, let's see if we can trick Jesus here. Let's see if we can, we can corner him. All right, Jesus, what are the two, or what is the greatest commandment? What is, the, what is the absolute, out of the ten commandments, what is the greatest commandment? And he says it simply. He's like, Love the, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. But the second is love your neighbor as yourself. See, first, do everything to glorify God. Love him with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Do everything in your being to love him. But also, love your neighbor. Love the people around you. Share Jesus with them. If you have Jesus in your heart, then you, don't, you can't bottle that up. That's selfish. Go and proclaim the name of Jesus. In Matthew 28, 19, it says, Go forth to all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Maybe you're not called to go to Africa or Asia, but maybe you're called to go across the hallway. Maybe you're called to go to the next cubicle over. Or maybe you're even called to go to your brother and your sister. Maybe that's your nation. Maybe that's where you're at is your nation. So go to them. Share the gospel. Share how Jesus came to this earth because we are sinful and there's no way we could get back to God. But through him and him dying on a cross, he, that saved us. And now if we believe in him with our whole being and our whole body, then we can have eternal life with him. Man, do whatever you do as if working for the Lord. And you will inherit the kingdom. Do whatever. Seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all will be given to you. Walk to class with the gospel on your mind. Sharing it. Do all things first thinking about Christ, then loving others, 
and you will be doing what God has called you to do.